Hi, I'm Valerie Engelhart. In this video, I am going to paint a hand holding a... Well, I don't really know if it's a frog or a toad that I'm painting. Based on its body shape, I'm going to say toad. The reference image did not tell me exactly what kind of amphibian. Wait, are toads amphibians? I don't have time to look it up right now. But anyway, toad in a hand. Now, this is because uh, it was based on the Inktober 2023 prompt toad. And so, well, it's a hand that's going to hold a toad. And I was kind of thinking like a witch and a familiar because um, it's, you know, October and Halloween. And I paint without sketching first. Typically, I actually find it a lot harder to sketch and then paint because I get so hung up on the lines. So I'm really only using a few colors for this. So for the hand, I used Rockwell Canada and it's called Elf's Wings. And it's a lovely brown fleshy color and it has some purple undertones that I really enjoy. Uh, the green that I'm lying down right now laying down right now. Yeah, that's the proper grammar. Uh, is on it diamond yellow. But it's green. And that's also by Rockwell Canada, so it is beautifully granulating and has multiple colors sort of floating in there. I'm painting on hot press paper, uh, which gives a different effect than my usual rough press. The paint sits on top a little more. Uh, so you usually get more watermarks, which I find quite charming. Now, because I'm kind of going in wet in wet, I am losing one of the fingers into the toad. And I am completely okay with that because it's going to give me more like color harmony, uh, reflections of light and shadow. So I'm just going to keep going on with my first wash. And typically with my first washes, I want to basically have the painting almost done, where after it dries, I just go and do some fine lines, put in some shadows for reshaping, and then it's done. So the first wash takes me the longest, and usually I try to get all of my highlights and shadows in pretty early. Now to get some of the bumpy texture on the toad, I've pulled out some just rubbing alcohol and just touching it onto the paper because it creates uh, this like circle bubble texture visually it doesn't actually pop off the page but I thought that would look great for like warts on a toad All right, the painting is dried at this point, so I'm going in and adding shadow shapes to give definition to the fingers. Now, the way I do this is, if I have a reference image available, I put it in a notenizer, which isolates values. So the reference image I'm looking at right now, well, I don't have it anymore, but at the time, it was just these blocks of really just three values, a light tone, a mid tone, and a dark tone. And so what I do is where I see light in my painting, I usually leave it white or I'll leave it very light. Everything that's gray is where I'll add my colors and I pay attention to what the subject is for choosing those colors. And then anywhere that's black in my reference image is where I'm going to put the shadow. Now this allows me to focus on shapes because typically we get so hung up on, for example, how many people struggle with painting hands or drawing hands when really it's just a series of shapes and the notenizer isolating those values lets me just focus on the shapes 
And so I paint what I see, not what I think I see. And that creates a more uh, convincing subject. Because we can see, based on the context, this is a hand, it's holding a toad. And I do love how the toad color bled into the hand a bit, so now it looks like light reflections in the shadows. Which I think makes it just all the more convincing, even though it doesn't look realistic. Uh, because I don't really want my paintings to look realistic, I very much want them to look like paintings. that layer dry so that I could go in and put the shadows on my toad. And uh, now I've pulled out uh, Rockwell Canada Limeu Green Brown, I think is what that one's called, um, but it's just a nice dark green. Wow, it just occurred to me like how two of the colors I used, the colors named, don't really match what they are. It's important to swatch your colors is what I'm saying. And one of the fun things about focusing on values is that you can really use just about any color you want. And as long as you get your shapes and your values right, people will be able to tell what the object is. this point I've brought out a synthetic, fairly firm filbert, and I am lifting away some highlights. Uh, there are some places where I went in too dark, I let things spread too much, and to bring more shape to my toad, I'm just lifting some of the paint. And that's the finished painting. Let me know what you think. If you liked this, go ahead and press that like button. And if you want to see more from me, go ahead and subscribe. I make videos every week. Have a wonderful day. Bye.